Well, hey, there we are, everybody. It's uh, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, and it's we are live on YouTube. We are the Gun Cranks. Hopefully, everybody's seeing us okay now. I've got a warning that our stream's a little slow. Guys, do I look okay to you? No, don't answer that. No, is the <laughs> video working? You're, You're more you handsome right than ever. That, <laughs> you got to know better by now. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, thanks for joining us here on our weekly little uh, gun gun club meeting. We are the Gun Cranks. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. With me is Tom McHale, the editor of American Handgunner, and our former boss and happily retired guy, Mr. Roy Huntington. Hello. Roy. That would be me. Happily retired. <laughs> yeah. We we have literally not talked since last week, have we? That's maybe that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, and Roy, I don't think you've seen this unless you've got one. Right out of the gate, we want to talk about something that we might just get in trouble if we talk about it. But I see Tom's already got his on. But we have new t-shirts. And what I wanted to show, though, is this one is très cool, as they say. This is the American Cop. Oh, com. that's the good one. It Bravo. says, defund the mainstream media. I stand with the thin blue line. Is that cool or what? So uh, I like it. Bravo. I, I don't know if they're available yet, if they're actually up, but they will be very, very shortly. And I think demand is going to be huge. And uh, that's one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. I'm excited. I think we're going to we're going to sell a lot of those because, frankly, we do need to defund the mainstream media. Yep. So anyway, so our talk tonight is about what, as in law enforcement, we call less lethal or I'd call it maybe non-traditional weapons. And the reason we're talking about this is you might have noticed the world's getting a little wacky of late and we've been talking among ourselves and we've been talking with readers and just, you know, our talk, our life in general, people are saying, if you're in a situation that doesn't necessarily call for guns, but yet things are really getting a little squirrely. I mean, what do you do? And frankly, that's beyond the scope of what we're really able to talk about, but by the same token, a lot of cool ideas for, as we said, less lethal or non-traditional weapons have come up. So before we get started, I, I think this is going to be a fun talk, but let me add the caveat that you need to understand the laws in your jurisdiction and understand, even though we're calling this less lethal, probably about anything we're going to talk about could really be a lethal weapon if you used it the right way. So the right way. So keep that in mind, but we're going to talk about some of that stuff. That, and don't forget that microphone you're using looks kind of like a lethal weapon. Oh, yeah, I could it's bash like somebody's club. skull in with that. <laughs> so my favorite one that we've had to talk about, and this really, this actually changed my my thinking. Roy, you were talking about most folks, uh, nobody wants to be shot, obviously, but we've both dealt with people uh, during our law enforcement career that they would stand there and go, go ahead, what are you going to do, shoot me? You going to shoot me? And they really, if you shot them, they would sure hate it, but they've never been shot, but yet they are scared to death of knives and edged weapons and we can use that to our advantage. Right. Well, you're right because everybody's been cut. You know, I mean, we all, if I say, have you ever been cut? Everyone <laughs> plays the video back in their brain of the terrible <laughs> thing that happened when they got cut. And I know <laughs> you and I, I, both I would alter point. that statement. I would say everyone well, has been cut within the last 24 hours. Oh, it's true. Even if it's like the paper me. cut, every time you, you know, do a or a chore of any kind, you get cut. Yeah, you know? always. Ow, ow, ow. And I think, and Brent's exactly right. We need to, you need to play on that because not everyone's been shot. Everyone's seen the movies and all that kind of stuff, but everyone's been cut. And so if a sharp anything comes out, uh, you know, I've certainly seen it in a group of people. If somebody draws a knife in a bar fight, suddenly <laughs> everybody runs away. Don't want to, you know, even, that. yeah, we don't want any of that. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to work that in, but you're exactly right. And we're not saying that you need to be a knife fighter because that's right. a whole nother thing. So. Well, yeah, the, the I idea know we that were... there is such thing as a knife fighter because everybody loses. Does anybody <laughs> ever win a knife fight? Like, Can we yeah. talk about that for just two seconds? This is really interesting. Yeah. It's easy and fun to do. If you think that <laughs> uh -oh. you're going to use Where are you going? your <laughs> knife to defend yourself, here's what you do. Go to the thrift store and get a couple of white t-shirts or just if you have any in your drawer and put them on. Then get your best friend, give him a erasable marker in red. 
you take an erasable <laughs> marker in blue. And now you guys stand toe to toe and now have a knife fight. Only, I mean, try to be real, right? In other words, like go, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way and I'm gonna stab him. And then, you know, I'm gonna like counter his thrusts and all that. I promise you within 15 seconds, you're both gonna have t-shirts that have marks all over and your arms gonna have marks on, your cheeks gonna have a mark on it, your knees gonna have a mark on it. And so don't believe what you see in the movies. And if you don't believe me, try it. Yeah, I, I well, just, um, I was just working on an article today for the upcoming Concealed Carry Annual. And our, our resident knife guru, Pat Covert, he does all our knife features in uh, American Handgunner. He, he wrote a line that just kind of stuck with me. He said, no fancy moves. While you're doing fancy moves, the other guy's going to be cutting you to ribbons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good advice. Taken, there you go. <laughs> I've taken some knife classes. And, and the first rule that my instructor taught me is first rule of a knife fight. Don't be in a knife fight. Yeah. But yeah. where I was going with this, with the non-traditional weapon side of it is not saying, you know, you got to use your knife to defend yourself. Cause obviously you can, but I think it was you, Tom, that pointed out, you know, if you were getting some gas, at a not so nice neighborhood and you see a group of people kind of eyeballing you, maybe that hatchet you've got setting in the truck. If you get out and just test the edge of it or the tomahawk, um, <laughs> that might get the point across better than uh, some other things you might do because they understand. I don't want to take on a tomahawk. Well, well, you, you Have you ever seen truckers at truck stops get out with that little short bath they have? And they walk test around the tire pressure. and they yeah. test the tire pressure. So th you could use your tomahawk for that. Just yeah. like get it out, flip yeah. it around, right? Hit, I feel like I'd be your tires. those tires. Yeah, a hit lot, your but... tires with the handle. That's actually brilliant. That's a great <laughs> idea. Bro. At the other yeah. end. Okay, done. Yeah. Well, I had another idea and, and jokingly before we, we get to my idea, but uh, I always said, you know, going into a bar fight, um, as a cop, those are on one hand, they're sort of kind of fun when you're younger. And on the other hand, they're not fun at all. Cause you got all kinds of folks fighting, but I always thought if we got to walk in the door and draw swords, I'm thinking <laughs> the trouble would probably cease. It's a, nobody wants to be cut. Yours. Exactly. <laughs> Which leads me to my thought. And this just came to my pointy little head. Um, we've seen the situation in St. Louis where a couple use weapons to uh, keep people away from their house and they were charged with a crime. My thought is, what if they had bayonets on their long guns? <laughs> and I'm being serious, because if you're standing in front of your house, you're not pointing your gun at anybody. But if you've fixed bayonets, um, are people going to think, I think that guy might stab me with a bayonet and I don't want any of that. So that's my I, discussion question for the night. I, fix well, bayonets. You know There's a no, fear let's, element. Let's let's one up that, though. Let's just say get a spear. I mean, because nobody wants to be cut and nobody wants to be speared. <laughs> I mean, there's a have you who here has ever seen Zulu Don, the movie? <laughs> yeah. OK, yep. now the Zulus pretty much ran roughshod over the British there using the uh, I think you call them Asengai, the little short, uh, you know, spear, thrusting spear, which they didn't throw. Yeah. They just held on to it. Yeah. Right. But Brent, you bring up a really interesting and compelling point that I never thought of before. It's a bit like the tomahawk thing, you know? Exactly. And I, I don't think I'm going to have to stand in front of my house and defend it against uh, an angry horde. But I was just thinking that might be a tool in the toolbox because I just, again, I, I've dealt with people that have looked at me and they go ahead and shoot me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I, if I'd had a, a band... I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm serious. If there was a bayonet stuck on the end of my trench gun or my, my carbine, you kind of wonder if that would change their, uh, their take on things. Well, Hey, history proves it. Think back to civil war. Who was, who was the school teacher? Uh, Jonathan, somebody, I, I Colonel I'm, Joshua L. Chamberlain of the thank you, Second Joshua Maine. Chamberlain hold this hill at all costs. And when he ran out of ammo, he said, fix bayonets, fix bayonets. and charge. And, uh, and boy, the they look ran, on those guys' faces like in the rabbits. movie. <laughs> Did he What's say that? fixed bayonets? <laughs> the look of the guys in the movie when yeah, he said oh. fixed bayonets. Yeah. Well, hey, one of his his guys said, what do you mean, charge? Yeah, yeah, we'll be going down the hill. Well, okay. Well, so. when you see a bunch of people charging down the hill with bayonets, you kind of think, they're not planning on losing. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> exactly. out of here. <laughs> you know, so, Tom, but, but you just brought up a very good point, which is, a lot of what we're talking about is mindset. And so 
even if you don't have your gun, even if you don't have your, your spear, even if you don't have your bayonet, I think if you have the mindset that you're going to win, then that's part of the, mm-hmm. uh, of the equation of using whatever's around you to be able to fight. You know, exactly. I'd like to use my iSpear app. It's a cool <laughs> little app on the, on the iPhone. It's called iSpear. And it's, it's all about attitude. You got to present it with plenty of attitude or else it's not very effective. So, Okay, on that note, we know we've got lots of folks watching. We are watching the chat here at 8, 11 p.m. So uh, if you got questions or you think this uh, ridiculousness we're talking about, we want to hear your your bayonet charge experiences. So please share that with us there on the, uh, the live chat. So, okay, maybe you don't like my bayonet idea. Let's talk about less lethal stuff or non-traditional kind of stuff. Now, Roy, this is one near and dear to your heart. Fire extinguisher, <laughs> eh? This, this is like... The Roy Huntington, you know, he's he, he he's like the Robbie Latham of fire extinguishers. <laughs> no, and you know what? I'm going to give credit where it's due, and it's due to Clint Smith for wow. making that clear to me years ago. And uh, I, in some of the very earliest videos we ever did, I don't know, 18 years ago, I went to Thunder Ranch. I spent a week or two with Clint. We all we did was film videos there at Thunder Ranch, and one of them was home defense. And in home defense, I remember this vividly, we still have the video is that he was sitting on the bed and he was talking about what do you do when you made your last re- retreat, you're in the bedroom and you picked up a red fire extinguisher just like that. He says, you shoot him with it, then you beat him to death with the metal tank. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, I, and you know what? I don't, if, no, if whoever's listening has never done this, go to Home Depot or, or uh, Lowe's or wherever, buy one of those $10 dry chemical fire extinguishers like Brent. Hold that up again, Brent, would you? So they could see what it is. They're not very much money. We've seen them there everywhere, right? And yeah. take it in your backyard and fire it. It just up into the dirt. So you see what happens. Because it just came out. <laughs> oh, and the pin just came out. We're about to see Run. it, I think, you know? <laughs> but And I think what you're going to learn is that someone's in your hallway and you blast them in the face with that thing, whether you've blinded them and they can't breathe and it's very effective. And then as Clint would say, then you beat them to death with the metal tank. (laughs) So like a non-lethal shotgun. It's kind of a non OC spray. Yeah. When you've got three (laughs) pounds of dry chemical fire extinguisher. And and if you've not done it, that dry chemical is nasty, nasty stuff. It is like the sourest substance in the world. It's basically kind of baking soda, but uh, I I've never had it blasted my face, but I've been around a lot of fire extinguishers going off. And what do we always do? Like at a car fire, when you're putting out the fire, you're Oh yeah. Everybody's cursing and yelling yeah. at each other. Yeah, I agree. I think, and the, another beautiful thing about that is that you can have the biggest, most obnoxious chemical fire extinguisher that you want sitting on the seat next to you in your car. And there's nothing anyone can say. It, it's, it's not a weapon. Uh, w- w- officer, right. why do you have that big fire extinguisher on your car seat next to you? Uh, in case I have a fire you know it's maybe, like, maybe okay. that's the answer to escape these highway riots you know where they're blocking off highways and stuff and surrounding the car so. it's yeah. true what's yeah, the reason why they use fire hoses huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah we haven't seen those outlawed yet yes no so. yeah well, maybe you know, we need more of them huh? yeah. yeah you know something you talked we kind of uh went past something i wanted to talk about and i got this from a reader was talking about you know, a lot of offices, you're absolutely verboten from carrying a firearm. And that's your decision, whether you want to play by those rules or not. Personally, I'd figure out a way to still be armed without them knowing it, but you know, to each his own. But if you're in a situation where you don't want to be unarmed, something like a baseball bat, an aluminum ball bat, or a a golf club sitting in the corner of your cubicle, nobody's going to, what's that there for? I'm, I play some softball after work. You know, I I seriously doubt their manager is going to say anything about it. And as I can personally attest, both of those are very good weapons and they are lethal if applied properly. So nice little tip from a reader there. Uh, Yeah. And we're not saying to go out and be a Superman or anything, but I think we have to be practical. And the practical side of it is that a, not everyone can carry a gun. B, not everyone should carry a gun or is qualified to do it. Not everybody would train. I think a lot of the, what are, what are the numbers right now? Like 40% of the people who are buying defensive guns right now are first time gun buyers. And mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing a 40% increase in attendance <laughs> at gun site, yeah. you know? 
So, so these people are buying these things. And so maybe before you take that leap of faith, you need to do what Brent's talking about. And, and, and what we're talking about is that look at the idea of having fire extinguishers, look at the idea of having a, maybe a baseball bat handy, you know, and, and I think a lot of this stuff too, is that it, it, just cause you have a baseball bat and take it outside and hit a watermelon with it for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, get some concept of what this is going to be like if you ever have to deploy it. Isn't that right? I mean, that's why we all trained as policemen. Exactly. You know? Now, here's an interesting one. Wild man in the comments in the chat said uh, he's hearing wasp and hornet spray. And I hear that a lot, too. I've used a lot of wasp and hornet spray. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, I saw a YouTube video and we can't believe everything we see on YouTube. But this this guy wanted to take that on. And so he they had a new sealed pack of wasp spray you know from the store and they broke the seal and they took it apart and for the life of me i have no idea why this guy volunteered to do this but they no. he, he allowed himself to be squirted right in the eyes with the, the stream wasp spray well i always thought that this was going to be a really bad thing but it, he had very little effect at all he said actually i don't really feel bad at all he said, it feels like it's stinky and it's kind of greasy in my eyes and it burns a little. I expected them to drop like a son of a gun. It's not scientific. I'm just telling you what I saw. Uh, but yeah. I've, I've gone online, done some research and I'm not seeing a lot of science behind it yet. So it can't well, be good for you, though. Dipping back into my days as a horticulture student at a major Midwestern university, in all seriousness, taking entomology classes, the active ingredient in those sprays is based on pyrethrin which is a naturally occurring chemical now they're using synthesized versions of that are more potent but basically one of the reasons we use that stuff is because it's not very dangerous to people in fact you can treat your clothes with that and the cool thing if you've never done this when you treat your clothes with these sprays and you are hiking, for example, I was hiking in a place there was just ticks everywhere and you watch them they start and they crawl about an inch and then they just I'm dead. I'm out of here. And it doesn't affect people. So that's anecdotal evidence, not scientific evidence, but I, I think any effect you would get from it would be the same if you sprayed oven, actually oven cleaner would probably be worse. It's more caustic um, or hairspray for that matter. Or of course you could always apply a, a lighter to it. I got flamethrower. But. <laughs> Have you ever done that with WD-40? Don't you try this at home, kids. You know, <laughs> you know, WD-40. I chaperone and you, you guys gotta... tonight. My God. I know we're out of control. So what I'm hearing, Brent, if if that theory with the spray works on treating your clothes. So if you want to keep off like muggers and bad guys, <laughs> you should treat all your clothes with pepper spray before you go out. Is that what you That's said? That's an idea. I never thought of that. Okay. I never thought of that. Well, yeah, man, and, maybe, maybe not. Huh? <laughs> hey, well, did you let's, see, let's, oh, we, go ahead, we did that first look video not too long ago on the pepper ball, mm -hmm. little shooter pepper yeah. ball guns. And uh, so I got to shoot them in the backyard here. And actually I was pretty impressed. I mean, the technology was there. They work great. Uh, I, I couldn't really fault the system. Uh, but I did have a lot of people remind me that if you shoot a burglar or somebody like that inside your house and use one of those pepper ball guns, that means just like what would used to happen when we were cops and someone would OC spray some bad guy when we were there. Now everybody is OC spray. Yep. And, yep. and like they, we, I was reminded that, well, you know, if you shoot somebody like that, then everybody in the house is now going to have, you know, it's a, basically it's a good outside tool though. This is an older model. Going to mm -hmm. ever seen one of these, the big, it's uh, from pepper ball, the big, combination yep. flashlight integrated yeah. laser and six we, shots actually, we tested one of those yeah wow you can six. you can hit paper plates every time at 25 yards with this thing i mean it is so it's a dog walker for me because i live in the suburbs yep. so it's it's kind of frowned upon to set up you know bring firearms out in the street at night because we're, we're starting to get coyotes and irritable critters and stuff so it's nice to have a little something you know to shoo them away but uh it's neighbor friendly so well, because it looks like a flashlight. We, yeah. You know, we and we tested that one. So the, if you if you know the FMG publications, uh, you can find that video on the Pepperball gun. And I agree with you. It's you're almost hiding in plain sight with it because you it just looks like a big flashlight. So and it's a heck of a club too. If the thing weighs about eighty five pounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, let let's talk about pepper spray because it's widely available. And I got to say. I always give pepper spray to all the women in my life. Once they they're adult, even the ones that do carry guns, uh, it gives you another option. And I think Roy's point is what's important. I've, uh, 
I couldn't tell you how many dozens of times I've used pepper spray in the course of my job. I've been pepper sprayed both in training and trying to uh, light somebody up with it, getting a lot of blowback. It's bad stuff. But the nice thing about it is it's not going to kill your adversary and it's not going to kill you if it's a situation where maybe it didn't rise to that level of force. So um, it's not the end all be all. When we first got it, they made it sound like this is going to solve every problem you ever got and that it does not. And there's a small percentage of the uh, population just doesn't care. But by and large, most folks that you spray with that, it's going to incapacitate them to some level. Now, having said that, if they're really mean or really doped up, uh, they can fight through it. Um, it can be done. So not not the end all be all, but it's 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 something good to have. My parents have it. My wife, uh, my nieces, nephew, uh, you know. So not I think it's one have. of those. I think it's one of those things where you, if you apply it, you should apply it just before you run really fast, because it's really just to buy you some time. Because if you're just a regular person, you're not there to arrest a bad guy. You know, you're there to stop whatever's going on so you can leave. You know, yeah. you're supposed I, to use it like shampoo, though. You apply twice, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Apply <laughs> and repeat. repeat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if it, for those of you that have had pepper spray training, because like my wife, she worked at probation, they had to go through it. And I was telling them the key to pepper spray training is after you get sprayed and all that stuff, and you, you get down in the bucket of water, they spray you off, however they do it. But then you go home and then you get in the shower. Oh! <laughs> and it all comes back because it's, it's an oil true. you're being sprayed with an oil so yeah well you know and i think if we're talking about pepper spray for a second we need to talk about there's a there's a dozen different ways you can apply it you know there's the the kimber pepper blaster you know there's the the various splatter ones there's the pepper ball there's the streams there's the bear spray you know all all of those have their shortcomings and all of those have their advantages and i think to get the little one you remember you see the little pocket ones and they've got like about a one second burst right. that is not enough ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you know you need 10 20 seconds at least and something that can reach out there out there eight to ten feet because you're going to be running as you're spraying it behind you by the way <laughs> yeah and and on the on the different types uh some of the things that we found like the uh, foam looks like a great idea it, it blinds a person but what they do is they tend to fling it off and fling it right back at you so now mm -hmm. it's kind of tit for tat um streams are okay you can deliver a lot of product into the eye region which is what you want but that means now you're working with a precision rifle instead of a scatter gun so having again pe pepper sprayed many folks both in training and and on the street i just like good heavy spray and the units we carried were only about that big but it'd give you about 15 seconds um and it, it took care of the problem the majority of the time but again going back the other way if you use it and you cannot immediately well even if you can get out of the air you're probably going to get it but so what it's it's just pain it's no big deal just you know cry your eyes out but do it while you're running that way really fast <laughs> it's he said it's just pain it's so, just pain. pain hey did you notice though that all that stuff is essentially not available right now I mean, yeah. if you try to buy any kind of pepper spray pr pretty much anywhere, it's either three times the price or not available. Uh, I, I saw somebody was complaining to me the other day that they bought some bear spray. And what bear spray is, is picture like a, you know, can of Aquanut in that hairspray, only it's it's a, a, the huge cloud of OC spray. And it's made for people hiking where bears are. Well, it's, it's just as regular OC spray. So it's good for people too. Uh, except they're going for 50 and a hundred dollars and $200 now uh, because of the riots and all mm -hmm. the silliness there. So, yeah. And I'm not saying that that's not worth every penny, but it is something. So we need to talk about what are some other options? Well, I was going to say, this is the point in the program where I get to ask you guys about your crazy taser stories. And, and as a, as a qualifier for that, I mean, across the board, you know, if you look at, 20 different police departments, they kind of find 60 to low 70s percent effective rate of, of tasing someone. So what say you to that data set? I, I would say that data set, they're probably, if that 
bad person was standing there stock still and took two probes and took the full ride, as we call it, it would probably be about 99% effective. The problem is fights are very dynamic situations and it's not uncommon. You have to make contact with two probes and they've got little fish hooks on the end and they go through your clothes. And even if they don't go in your flesh, they arc. And again, I've been tasered and I hate it. That's the one thing I, I don't want to ever volunteer for again, but I've used it multiple times on the street and it's very effective as long as you can get those probes in there. Um, I, I'm a fan of it, but uh, it's, unless you train, um, I would be concerned because you got, basically you got a one shot deal. You make the, the uh, activation, the little probe shoot out. And if you miss now you've done nothing. So that's my only concern about taser. Otherwise, if you get two good probes in them, they, they will ride the pony. They will ride the lightning for five seconds. <laughs> yeah. I, every time I've seen it applied correctly, it absolutely works. And they go right down to the ground and everybody's mm -hmm. happy. And then everybody goes home. But I agree with you, Brett. I think it's almost a bit like actually just having a defensive handgun is you, you have to train yourself to not expect it to work. So mm -hmm. when it doesn't work, you're not surprised. And you yep. can go to whatever your plan B is, you know, to your baseball bat or to run, you know, run and hide. But I, I think all of these things are what, what we called it at the beginning. They're less lethal. Right. Mm -hmm. And which also, I think, stands for less likely to work the way you think they're <laughs> going to work. You know, exactly. Uh, I mean, I had, I've hit people with a PR 24 nightstick and they had they made absolutely no sign that I had just hit them which in the training said that they were all going to fall down on the ground and give up and cry for their mom, you know, yeah. and these people made absolutely no, didn't he had, didn't even notice that I had, had wielded a death blow. <laughs> you know, on I them. had the same thing and I got a perfect downswing strike right, right in the quadricep, which by all rights, they should have gone down. And the guy just stood there and goes, why'd you hit me? And I'm thinking, it's going to get ugly. And it did. That was a fight. <laughs> Seemed like <laughs> a good a idea at the time. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I had an officer one time and he hit a guy in the thigh and he hit him so hard that you could see it broke because it, it, it you know, have you ever seen him where that you, sometimes that happens and it immediately swells up to like twice as big as it was like instantaneously mm -hmm. to the point that we all kind of went, Holy <laughs> God, look at that. You know, and this yeah. guy just kept fighting like nothing at all happened. And so I think yeah. there's lessons there because we've seen it with guns. We've seen it with everything that I can think of. I've never squirted somebody in the face with a fire extinguisher. But in my opinion right now, two pounds of dry chemical fire extinguisher from about five feet in somebody's face would certainly give you plenty of time to run away. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And I got some other things here that uh, I just dug through my stuff out there. You know, uh, rubber uh, slugs. Uh, I, I cut this apart. It's not really rubber. It's a hard plastic. Now, typically law enforcement uses these, um, but they are available to the non-law enforcement market. And having used a couple of these, they're quite effective. But the reason a lot of folks are getting away from them is uh, it's twofold or a lot of agencies. Number one, it's really easy to make a mistake and put a real slug in there. And why did you kill him when it wasn't really necessary? But the other issue is they don't really work all that much. Um, they do, but in terms of percentages, whereas you're saying a taser on the street, 70%, I'd put these more like 10%. So I've got some, but I've not got them loaded in any of my shotguns around here. But, you know, people ask that question once in a while. So do you, you guys have differing opinions or? No, do you remember the old sock round when oh, they yeah. first came out? Yeah, so so oh, basically, bags. yeah, take like a, a sock and put a little a charge of buckshot or something in the front of it and tie it off in the back. And those were some early ones, but I've seen somebody was dancing around on the top of a car and they must have shot him ten times yeah. with the with the rubber buckshot, you know. And he just kept saying, "Why are you shooting me?" Yeah. Well, you know, let I mean, let's go in a slightly different direction. This is a little leather pouch. It's made by uh, Mike Baranti, Doc Baranti of Baranti Leather. And he made this for me when we went to Africa not too long ago. And what you do is you wear it on your belt, okay? And inside of it is a roll of quarters. So, <laughs> so all it is, if, it's ever, if you're stopped, I went through security and everything. They said, what's that? And I said, that's my pocket money. And they picked up, they looked at it, and they went, oh, okay, right? Except what it really is, 
is it's a less, less lethal thing that you can strike with. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> so what have you got? There you go. Yeah. The DeSantis City Slicker coin purse. That's what it is. Yeah. I discovered one thing, though. I keep a whole fistful of challenge coins in here because I'm handing them out to my friends, right? Even though they're, right. they're outdated challenge coins. And that draws more attention from TSA than anything else. It's like, what's, what's that? Are those are challenge. Co oh, and then you start hearing, well, you know, I was in the military and I, and yeah. So the story starts. So next time I fly, which I'm not sure when that's going to be right now, but I'm going to get rid of my challenge coins and I'm just going to go to quarters. <laughs> well, and, and money. Yeah. is it a perfect thing? Because it means that you're toe to toe with somebody. But I think if, yeah. if somebody grabs your arm and you have the ability to get something like this off and give them a whap above the eyebrow or something, it may buy you a second or two that you can break free and run away. Yeah. And I think the crux of what we're doing tonight is that we're trying to make you understand, to look around you to see what, what are your options for defending yourself. I took a uh, class one time on how to defend yourself on an, on an airplane. And unbeknownst to me without getting too specific that I was surrounded by defensive weapons on an airplane and I had never really thought of it before but I mean if you but think about it think of the oxygen tanks have you ever seen the little oxygen bottles mm -hmm. that are in the overheads do not don't use these these are for the not you they're for people in case of emergency right okay I'm going to get one and beat the snot out of somebody if I have to right so but there's a lot of other options one of them that i had never absolutely ever thought of in my life before and that your little in-flight magazine <laughs> you just get it roll it and up roll it up <laughs> yeah absolutely as tight as you can and then you use it as a poking kind of an instrument because i i remember in our police days brent you, you, you back me up on this is that really the most one of the most effective ways to use a nightstick is as a is something that you poke with right so, you know, you poke with them or, or you hold it sideways and you block with it. The, the striking thing is, I think, overrated. And so if you do that with a magazine, you essentially have a kind of a mini version of that. And, and of course, pull up the seat cushion. And it's, for goodness sakes, it's got arm holes in it. So you can put your <laughs> arm in it and then you have a perfect defensive tool there if you need to. So there's, there are tools around you everywhere. And I think you just have to start thinking about applying them because, okay, what does everyone say when you come up to take the report after they've been assaulted? The first thing they say is, I couldn't believe it was actually yeah. happening to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, you bring up a great point about being creative with your environment. Um, I read a story a couple of weeks ago about a, uh, a guy who owned a pizza shop, Stargate Pizza in Delaware. And he's sitting there working in his store one night and a guy comes in waving a machete to rob him. Mm. So he looked around and he said, what creative defensive weapons do I have? He wasn't armed, the owner. So he threw a pizza at the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, drove him out, you know, kind of negated the effect of a machete when you got a pepperoni. Yeah. It was probably pepperoni pizza or maybe maybe it was anchovies that'd kill anybody but was it a tactical pizza that's the best tactical pizza <laughs> well you know you know what it had a what, tanto edge on it you know a tanto pizza yeah. god now somebody's gonna make a tanto pizza but, you know <laughs> i think i might actually you know that but that reminded me because i remember in an officer safety class we had one time because what do you do if you're if you're a delivery man, if you're taking an order at a table, if you're something like that, you've got some kind of a little notepad or order thing in your hand. And, and I had never thought of this before, but during this officer survival class, they said, well, if you're on a traffic stop and somebody makes a move, the very first thing you do is throw this at their face. Yep. And, and I defy you to, to, to try to counter that because I mean, just tell your wife here, throw this at my face, which you may be already familiar with that. I'm not sure, but, <laughs> uh, but, but they can't help it is that they go like that, you know, or they'll, they close their eyes and they move and they jump and they're, and that buys you that buys half you a, a second, second to, yeah. to get out. And so, but, but uh, of course, if you don't think beforehand, then you're not going to know to do it. Well, that's, that's the whole action versus reaction theory. I mean, it's, it's all about biology and, and, you know, electricity really i mean yep. when if the other guy is starting the action you're you're a half second behind on everything you yeah know? well i, I want to co compliment our uh, our folks on live chat uh now the the brains are starting to loosen up and we're getting some really sick and twisted stuff and i love <laughs> it 
not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was okay. Wild man is uh, talking about he's going to get a tomahawk. So right on. Tom can hook you up on the the right tomahawk to get American tomahawk, man. There you go. Dragon breath rounds. I think these would probably be pretty useful. And again, a, maybe an area defense scenario where you didn't necessarily want to fire on the crowd, but you crank a couple of these off, especially at night. If you're not familiar with a dragon breath round, basically it shoots fire about 30 feet in front of the muzzle of your shotgun. And it's really loud. And, uh, I keep a couple of these for making, I've not done any photos with them yet. Cause we don't want to be like over the edge and stupid, but one of these days I'm going to just do a stupid, you know, die hard kind of style video, just cranking off a bunch of these, but they are spectacular, especially if somebody's not expecting it. What are you going to do? Shoot us. Wow. You know, and it's, I mean, it's, it's incredible. So that's not a bad thing. And well, I think uh, of course has you kept have to be careful because you do need to have a gun though. That's true. Things. That's true. Yeah. But I also wanted to mention Hascat back in the day. Big heavy glass ashtrays and beer bottles. Oh, and pool sticks. Don't forget <laughs> pool sticks. That's true. That's like, what do you do with that pool stick that's in your back seat? I play pool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know what? Now, if we're talking about that, let's talk about this. I carry a cane often because mm -hmm. I have a bad back. And so there's no reason why you can't get creative in the kinds of canes that you carry. And you be aware of what's legal wherever you are, you know. But does but yours have a, a blade of, in it? There, there Mess may up. indeed be a couple of canes there. <laughs> Thank you, Cold Steel. Uh, but it's legal here, so. Uh, but I, but I think you know, there's no reason why you can't have like a blackthorn uh, walking stick that's made. They have them injection molded, kind of a hard plastic kind of, and that's a very effective tool. If, as a matter of fact, if you're bored, go to YouTube and, and do a search on cane fighting or stick fighting. It's a, it's a very powerful tool to have at hand and it's illegal virtually everywhere. When I fly, I carry a cane. It's not a sword cane, but it's a, it's a substantial cane and uh, no one questions you. As a matter of fact, I like it because people open the doors for you and they, they let yeah. you get on the airplane first and stuff like that. So <laughs> if they only knew, huh? if yeah. they only knew. So well, I got to say, there's somebody we all know that his family went to England. This has been years ago. And they took a stick uh, defense class, which I later took, and, and you learn a lot of incredible stuff. But, but the whole family had custom made uh, canes. So when you see a 16 <laughs> and 18 year old kid be bopping down with their their cane, you know, and the whole family's got them either either they didn't have enough vitamin D in their diet growing up or something's up. But I thought that was pretty funny. They all had their canes and, but Hey, they were armed in a country where even, you know, self-defense is illegal, I think, but at least they had something. I think for if most bad guys and Brent, you speak to me about this too. Most bad guys don't expect a, a fight. In other nope. words, when they come up to you and they confront you with whatever knife, gun, just bullies or something, if you are aggressive and and this is a decision you have to make, I'm not saying to do this all the time. You have to weigh all of the variables. But if you decide that you want to fight back, the 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 percentages are like extremely high in the like 92 percent range that you will succeed. In other words, they don't want to fight. They just want to get your money and get out. If you're mm -hmm. going to fight them back, if you're going to make a scene, then they're out of there. You know, there's an old saying about what you, what do you do when you're in an ambush, you rush the ambush. Now, yes, I know it takes cojones about this big to do something like that, but certainly I'm a little guy. And when I was a policeman, there were times when simply my sort of combat mindset and my assertive response to someone made them think, you know what, this guy I think is a little bit nuts and he's going to fight me back. <laughs> I never mind. I give up, you know, and I think exactly. that's something you need to think about. Mm. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I'm looking around the table at all this, this destruction and terrible things, but uh, <laughs> uh, we had another comment, a cane crook. And that's, if you take, I, I highly recommend if you can find a stick defense class because um the instructor he carries just a traditional wooden cane and you can do some really spectacular stuff with them that it's really not that technical it's actually some common sense stuff but once you see a, a master show you how to do it it's like wow i i after that i never approached anybody with a cane or i i did always approach somebody different because they can mess you up pretty bad pretty fast so do you remember colonel rex applegate oh yeah it's a 
Fairbairn Sykes knife and, you know, very famous World War II uh, behind the scenes with the OSS and all that kind of stuff. I was fortunate enough to know him and we used to have a uh, breakfast at the Blade Show periodically. And so he, he was in his 80s and I, he, we were having breakfast one day and I said, I just heard something that you were a victim of a street robbery in, I think it was Dallas or something at the SHOT Show. And he was very understated and it had a real cynical kind of dry sense of humor. And he said, yeah, that didn't get very far. <laughs> and I, because he taught stick fighting. And yeah. so the cane that he carried is what he did. So we, he put these two people down is what he did. And there he was in his early eighties. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's a it's wow. a wonderful story and it's the truth and you could probably find the details if you did a, a google it a little bit but uh that's what made me a firm believer in having a, a of a fighting stick or something like that and i think probably of all the stuff that we've talked about that that's maybe the most simple thing and what i think brent you were saying about the people who went to england you know just because you're 16 years old doesn't mean you can't have a walking stick right. you know and so i think it's true but just remember don't, it's all mindset so the best thing i think people can do is don't get in the situation to begin with and then if you are in the situation look around lay your hands on something that's standing by you and put it to work yeah well and i think that raises another or maybe just to amplify the point is again this was kind of inspired by a lot of our our readers and questions we get about you know what if what if what if what if this crowd and what if what if and avoidance is always the best thing. I mean, even it, I'm not saying you abandon your home, but if you're any place other than your home, um, just avoid those folks. I don't care how tough, how bad, how big your gun is. You're not going to fight off a hundred people. It's just not going to happen. And truthfully, having been in some riot situations, it's only going to be about five people, um, or maybe three people. So I suppose if you can take those, the right three out, the rest of the crowd will kind of step back. But how about we not try that at all? Let's just, make do i always call it the scared bunny defense there i go like a scared Rarely little bunny no, right yep <laughs> exactly yeah, well said and there's nothing bad about that especially if you have your family with you yep. um i think it was tiger mckee an american handgun a while ago wrote a very good uh tactics and training article about uh, deciding on when to get involved or not mm -hmm. you know when do you risk your family do you risk your future your life you know your livelihood to get involved with a strange situation, you know, yep. and that's a, that's a personal call, but for goodness sakes, if I'm with my family, the last thing I'm going to do is wade into something. If I have the ability to escape and there's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I would shake their hand if that's what they did. You know? <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> right. um, and what we're talking about getting away. Okay. Maybe this is a little much, but throughout my career, I always did this. And now I've kind of started doing it again, even though I avoid areas where we're having uh, any rioting or I'm sorry, the nonviolent, peaceful, social justice gatherings that no, result in fiery of, but mostly peaceful protests. mostly peaceful <laughs> yeah, i avoid yeah. those areas like the plague but if if i because i may have to go that way here another week to something i cannot avoid but i i always carry a military smoke grenade or two because if you're in a situation <laughs> where you need to disengage that's what the military does of course you do smoke <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? Can you get but those on it. eBay? You can. You, know? you can. can. There's you nothing really? illegal about. Sm oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The big. What is it? M50. Uh, uh, oh, be damned. They're, they're All right, I need one but, now. Yeah. But I figure if you come across, you get in that street, and oh look, there's a whole bunch of people, and oh now there's a whole bunch of people behind me. What do I do? I think if you pop smoke. <laughs> people are going to get confused plus they're going to think oh my lord they've released you know agent orange or something and and, and we got the helicopters go, so. fly into your rescue right when you pop smoke isn't that how it works i, ha I haven't worked that part out I first thing i would smoke? do though if i threw smoke out i'd start yelling poison gas exactly. poison gas exactly <laughs> well i have run. red and green and white and <laughs> I, I i popped a purple one because i wanted to see what it would look like and it was really cool but i'm saving the rest of them <laughs> i i i don't work there anymore i'm retired okay so yeah. you know what i'm i'm gonna do a video since you guys have kind of yep. made fun of you, me yes under you your are. i'm gonna do a video with it i'm gonna take i'm gonna pop a big smoke and then i'm yep. gonna take some dragon breath out there and it's gonna be my version of rambo 
you know, <laughs> you know, we meant to talk to you about dragon breath, by the way. So, Oh, <laughs> uh, well, right. I, Hey, what can I say? I've had, uh, my 11 month old granddaughter here the last two days and I haven't gotten any sleep and I hadn't showered for two days up until a few minutes ago. So, so you know about less lethal defense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, well, guys, it's uh, it's eight forty-five. Any major closing thoughts here? This has kind of been a a potpourri sort of of uh, touching on everything from guns to smoke grenades. But um, closing thoughts for our our little time spent here together. I've I've learned something. I've upgraded my plan from carrying a pizza to um, somebody. One of our viewers suggested a frozen pizza would be more effective. So <laughs> yes. that's going to be part of my everyday carry kit from here on out frozen. So. Did, did you see with the anchovies? Old, there was a, some TV show and I can't remember who wrote it. Might've been uh, the twilight zone, but it was a, a, a lady calls the old lady calls the cops and the cops get there and her husband's dead. And she had a roast in the oven. So she said, well, I already have this roast in the oven. Why don't you eat it? And so they all <laughs> ate it. And what she did was she killed her husband with the frozen roast. And then the cops ate the evidence. <laughs> so you could do that if you wanted to see. I, I want everyone who's listening to go buy three or four or five or six fire extinguishers tomorrow and put them all around your house and put one in each car, because not only will they actually protect you from a fire, which you would probably be more likely to die from than a riot or a, you know, a asteroid impact or something like that but it actually can also really truly help you in a situation. Picture your 15 or 16 year old daughter in the car and she has to defend herself. She's, I mean, she's probably not gonna use a gun. She's not gonna use a tomahawk, but if she knew she could pull that little you know, ring out and blast some you know, <laughs> asshole outside of her car, that there you go. So do that, well, it's an assignment. Do that. All right. I, I'm I was not it. laughing at you, Roy. I was laughing at uh, Lifted Above, one of our commentators. Beheaded with a frozen pizza works like a giant throwing star. I would love to see that. I yeah, want to see pictures. Back in, yeah. uh, Power to the people. <laughs> <laughs> what was wow. it in the James Bond top hat? Is that the guy? Uh, 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 odd job. Odd job. Odd job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cut the head off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, cool. Well, if you didn't join us right at the top of the show, this is our cool new deal. Defund the mainstream media. I stand with the thin blue line. Um, what better way to upset your favorite liberal? And to how show can they get that, Brent? Well, that's just it. We're doing a teaser because we're not even sure that we're supposed to be talking about it right now. It literally came <laughs> two hours well, ago by Curry. this one. This one is on. The handgunner version with the uh, oh, I can't see the less bear 1911. Less bear 1911 parts diagram is on nine line apparel right now. Oh, it is. I okay. glanced at it before the show, so the other ones may be there too. They're just coming out. Okay, can I so explain let's... that real quick too? Because Les called me up today and he said, "Hey, hey, where'd you get that T-shirt at?" You know, <laughs> and so I had to explain the reason why there's a less bear 1911 on the back is because we have the American handgunner less bear 1911 ladies yeah. and gentlemen yeah so go buy one <laughs> yep yep and we had one quick question here can you leave a fire extinguisher in a hot car yes you can even in arizona because people do it all the time and they're not supposed to pop off into like 170 or 200 so mm -hmm. if it's that hot you got other problems besides <laughs> just a fire extinguisher <laughs> so so i've never had one go off in a in a car yeah. i've never heard of one so okay guys well no i think we have have beaten this to a pulp. So I just want to say, make sure you check out gunsmagazine.com, AmericanHandgunner.com, and please like and share and all that cool stuff down at the bottom. Subscribe to the FMG uh, YouTube channel. That's how we convince our boss to keep letting us get together every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So our audience is growing. You're, you're part of a select group of, of discerning viewers that check out the gun cranks live every week. So on behalf of Tom McHale, editor of American handguns and our, our boss and our friend, Roy Huntington, I'm guns magazine editor, Brent wheat, and we are out of here. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye everybody. <laughs>